Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's one thing for you to celebrate the man of God. But it's another thing to celebrate the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The God who is mighty. The God who is mighty in battle. The Bible declares, lift up your hands, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. I came to tell you that tonight, when you leave here, you don't need to remember Isaac Petit Frere. But tonight, when you leave here, remember that you serve a God who is greater than all things, greater than all problems, greater than all battles. Is there anybody in this house who serves a God who is mighty in battle? If that's you, I want you to lift up your hands. And I want you to give God a crazy shout of praise. Come on now and give God a praise in this place. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. Somebody make some noise in here. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. The Bible spoke, the Bible speaks of the story of the prophet Ezekiel, and he says this, he says, prophesy to the dry bones. And when you prophesy to the dry bones, the Bible declares that what was, what was succeeded after he prophesied to the dry bones, that sinews came together, tissue came together, breath was brought into the body. But that's not the point I want to talk about. Because prophecy is not me telling your future. Prophecy is me speaking the Rima word of God. And when the Rima word of God is uttered, people got to come back to life. People got to come out of graves, come out of dead places. But that's not the part I'm interested in. The part I'm interested in is if you go back to Ezekiel 37, it doesn't just say that there were sinews that brought the bones together. It doesn't just say that there was tissue, but the Bible says that there was a noise. You see, when dead people come back to life, there's got to be a noise. Are there any dead folks that have been put in a grave? You think Ken so love you? You think the Kayo Femme? Me gare o la toujours. La Seigneur mou la yo te pose o te mourinet. Mais le Saint-Esprit rentre dans où Il ressuscite. Et parce qu'il ressuscite, qu'on y a un bon témoignage pour dire je ne mourrai pas. Je vivrai. I feel like making some noise in this place. Are there some dead people that have been brought to life? If that's you, make. Stop! No! Where are my dry bones that have been brought back to life? Tell somebody, say, I'm still alive. To show what you want to do, to show. And then they think that more than that, to show. And see more than that, they suffer the whole month from the day come out. From my want your glory come in. From glory fear to come in. So somebody say, I came with some real worship. So somebody say, a real worship. A real, a real worship. Are you guys going to give me two minutes? I want you to put your Bibles very quickly. Bible the minute. And I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 4. They messed up putting me up here. No, don't say that. I'm going to take, I'm gonna take all the time. I'm going to take all the time. I'm going to take all the time. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 4, verse 20. Father, I pray right now, Lord, that you would breathe life into this place. 
I pray, Lord, that you would bring your spirit that would bring change in this house. Lord, awaken our spirit in worship, God. Lord, give us the full revelation of your glory that we may leave here banners of your presence. But we ask that in your name. Amen. 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 I love this text because it gives us the preface of what worship is. The necessity of worship, the position of worship, the posture of worship. Somebody say position of worship. Posture of worship. We're going to tap into a certain section of the text, a certain part of the text where Jesus is speaking to the Samaritan woman. He's speaking to what we know is the woman of the city. The woman at the well. And if you recall from the story, it was an encounter that the woman had that she never planned. As a matter of fact, she put herself in a context, in a situation, so as to not encounter anyone. She puts herself in a situation where she shouldn't run from anyone because she is overcome with shame. She's overcome with guilt. She's overcome with her present situation that took one up by it. She's got her business out. She's the woman that you would see on Mari Povich. She's the woman that you would see on Jerry Springer. She's the woman that, you know, you know that woman where she says the baby is yours and she's been on the show 20 times? Y'all know that woman, right? Anybody ever ask the question, what you doing on this show 20 times? 20 times? And there's only 30 days in a month. Oh my goodness. She is that type of woman. And she has positioned herself in a place where she can avoid people. Anybody ever get, got, get caught in a situation where you're trying to avoid people? You get caught in a context where you're trying to avoid people. You find yourself People know some things about you that make it weird when you get around them. They know your business. They know your stuff. And so what you do is you try to find a way to stay away from people. Well, you can hide from people, but you cannot hide from God. Tell somebody, say, you can hide from folks, but you cannot hide from God. The Bible says, if I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I go down to the pit of hell, you are there. That's what I love about God is God doesn't wait for you to come to him. He said, I'll meet you right where you are. I'll meet you in the middle of your mess. I'll meet you in your sin. Oh, I ain't got no folks in here who know that they weren't born speaking King James Version. They weren't born with it all together. As the people who get to watch, they would say, "I'm not self defeat." But you think it's the rim that fatra? You think it's the rim that saki babo? But pack the worm, you pack the gare figim. Me gare sabon je fe de la vim. Li la vim. Li fe prop. Li fe tout no moon. Ki santi bon e vamo. Bas mi la vim. God has a way by His grace of coming to us. He comes as the movie like living swim way. she encounters Jesus, but she only sees him as, as a man. And then he prophesies to her. And he says to her, you got five, and the one you're with is nine of yours. I got questions about that. That's for another day. <laughs> and then, he begins to ask her a question, and she responds here in verse 20. And notice that the preface of worship begins in a place of brokenness. Yes. Yes. Worship begins with brokenness. 
it does not begin with pride. It does not begin with knowledge. It doesn't begin with education. As a matter of fact, I find the more educated you are, the harder it is to worship. Et ça fait une fois nous trois bordel et nous venons l'église. Nous 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 dépensons trop comme là nous n'avons pas acheté rad. Nous pas envie dans c'est vrai là nous dans l'église parce que nous connais nous fait déposer 100 dollars pour ouab là. Nous pas rassurer comme ça. But when you got nothing left and you're broken and all you got is you and Jesus, you don't care what people think about you. You don't care about how you look. You don't care about your dress. You don't care about your outfit. You don't care about what you got on. You say, I need Jesus right now. For the Bible declares the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. God didn't want your pretty clothes. He don't want your education. He don't want your status. He don't want your title. He wants your brokenness. So somebody say, I'm broken, I'm broken, I'm Demini, please, please. Watch me, brother. If you need to come and tackle me. I was just supposed to teach, but I feel like I gotta prophesy to this church. So now she approaches Jesus in her brokenness. And look at the text now, verse 20. In verse 20, now she responds to the word of the prophet. She doesn't know yet he's the God. He's the man of God. Yeah. The son of God. Yeah. She's getting little bits of revelation as she has conversation with him. Yeah. The more you converse, the more you Come know. On, the more you have conversation, the more you know. So he went from a man to now a prophet. And then she gives him an excuse. And she presents to him why the prophet shouldn't pay much attention. She says to him, oh, I don't need this, I got that. She says, our father, that is my ancestors, Papa went, Mama went, worshipped. Mistake number one. It don't matter how your mama worships. It don't matter how daddy worships. Because mama's worship and daddy's worship is not going to set you free. You got to get down and dirty and get to know the God you serve. My fathers worshipped on this mountain. And yet you, Come on, sir. your fathers, uh-huh. worshipped where? In Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Can I take a pause? There's a difference between worship and true worship. That's why Jesus said later on in the text, he says the time has come and now is. When true worshipers, I love that we call this beyond the worship. And the reason why I like that we call it beyond the worship is because we've got a misperception about worship. Because we have an improper posture, an improper position on worship, we have to now think about going beyond it. When it is difficult to go beyond worship when you are worshiping appropriately the way God intended you to. Because worship is not about an action, worship is about a lifestyle. Does it be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of it? It said what? It said, it is now the worship that is acceptable. There is worship that is unacceptable and worship that is acceptable, meaning there is true worship. He didn't say worship, he said true worship. The reason why he had to say true worship is because there's false worship. Because sometimes we get stuck in the repetition. We think worship is a slow song. We think what anybody can... Fast songs, praise. Slow songs, worship. When worship is not a song, it's more than that. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. She says to him, your father worshipped 
on this mountain. Yes, Our fathers, sorry, worshipped on this mountain. Your fathers worshipped in Jerusalem. Mistake one, it's about the fathers. Mistake number two, she's got the improper position. She has the improper position of worship. That is, where she is located in her worship. Oh, y'all, y'all gonna catch it in a minute. She has an improper position, and now Jesus is about to bring clarity. Please go to verse 21. She says, men in verse 20 ought to worship what? Either on the mountain or in Jerusalem. She's saying, your worship has a higher position because the location is nice. The building is nice. Come on, Come on. You have a better altar. Yes, sir. You got better lights. Yes, sir. Better sound system. Yes, sir. Better microphone. Yes, sir. Better preachers. So you're in Jerusalem. I'm only on this mountain. And on this mountain, I don't have a sound system. On this mountain, I don't have a pulpit. On this mountain, I don't have air conditioning. On the, I don't know money catching where I'm going. Because now she tells Jesus, your building or location is better than mine. Your daddy's church is better than my daddy's church. Oh, I hear God speaking right now. Because we live in a culture. Please put that up, man of God, put that up. Because now in verse 21, pay attention. Okay, it's back. Jesus responds to her and says, Woman, believe me, the hour will come where you will neither worship in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem. Can I just back up for a moment? Jesus is saying, Here's your problem, woman. You made the worship a location. Your position is not where. Your position is who. They missed it. They missed it. Position, c'est pas côté adoré. C'est pas dans adresse qu'on adoré. C'est côté yeux fixé. Because he says it is not in Jerusalem. It will not be on a mountain. <laughs> He says, it will be where? To the Father. I came to declare to somebody today that the moment you begin to realize that the sound system don't matter, the music don't matter, the preacher don't matter, the musicians don't matter, you might have drums and you don't have drums. You might have music, but you don't have music. There's some folks in here saying, Pastor, that church got better musicians than this church, so I can worship better here than there. I came to tell you, that's old school worship. Real worship doesn't look at where. Real worship looks at who. And when you look at who, you ain't worried about the sound system. You ain't worried about the music. You ain't worried about air conditioning because you know who. So somebody say, it's not where, it's who. C'est pas koto yé, c'est a qui yé swap loué. C'est pas koto yé, c'est a qui yé swap loué. Parce que le kounia wap loué, mon Dieu. Et le kounia zio fixé sous lui. He says, I lift up my eyes. Oh, for where my help cometh from. My help comes from the Lord. Zio fixé sous l'éternel. Et c'est lui même qui est d'eux. It's the who, not the what that matters. Let somebody tell me it's the who, not the what. Now, nah, officially, I have two minutes. My body didn't pass the alley. Because if who matters and not what, your posture is different. Your posture is different. That's good. Because now your position is not the location. And so, because your position. It's not the location, your posture. That is the direction by which yes, sir. 
That is what motivates. Yes, sir. That is what gets me to worship. Changes. Yes, sir. Watch me now. Watch me now. Somebody say, watch me now. Watch me now. If it's the person, I can't come with worship the same way. If it's the location, I got a way I see my worship. But when it's the person, I come differently. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. When it's the location, you look at what you get out. Because now, when you worship a location, you're worshiping what man builds. Verse 22, and we will do that another day. Because Jesus says, you will not worship the Father. He says, you do not know what you worship. He's saying, you've been worshiping, but you're not worshiping something animated. Yes. You've been worshiping the system. Yes. You've been worshiping the pulpit. Uh -huh. You've been worshiping the pastor. You've been worshiping the musicians. You've been worshiping the worship leader. I find people like to worship worship leaders more than they worship worship. So because you worship the worship leader, and because you worship the pastor, and because you worship the sound, and because you worship the keyboard, and because you worship everything that is in the building, the location, you're going to look to see what you get out, rather than what you put in. If I worship the sound, the sound better sound good. If I worship the drums, the drummer better be killing. If I worship the musicians, they better play good. If I worship the worship leader, he better sound good. Oh, because I'm worshiping the thief, but I don't know what I'm worshiping. But now when you change your position to worshiping the person, you cannot go to a person and worship them asking what to get out. They missed it, they missed it, they missed it, they missed it. Si m'pral kouto moun pou m'adore, m'pral kouto m'adore pou m'adore ki sa m'pral fèpou. Because he said, I don't want to be my daughter. 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 I don't want to be my I don't I don't look to get out. I look to bring. When the position changes, the posture changes. Because now when I come to church, I don't care who the musician is. I don't care who's preaching today. I don't care what we're going to see. Because I came with my worship. Because I came with an intention to bring something to the table. Too many people are Christian consumers. They're Christian people who come for to buy. Give me a say the pastor appreciate me and you by team. He let me sit like boy you by your friend. We are going to have him though. Do pala, do pala. To show what he is that you. Because when you come with worship, you came to bring something. Is there anybody that got something to bring to somebody they know? Because I didn't serve anybody. I serve the Lord God Almighty. The Lord who is strong and mighty in battle. Is there anybody that came with worship? I'm done. If you know who you worship, you would have true worship. Because you would come and go to work to the feeling of you. Give me a sala for the captain of the feeling Because they didn't come with the worship. The worship leader's job is not to get you excited. The worship leader's job is to guide you with what you already got. And when you went on Monday and you realized how good your God was, 
You went through Tuesday worshiping God on a toilet. You went through Wednesday taking a shower and saying, my God is good. When you went on Thursday and you were eating that TV corner, but you said, my God, you are good. When you went on Friday and you hung out with your wife and you realized how blessed you were for the woman that he gave you and realized how blessed you were for the man that he gave you, when you realize the goodness of the God that you serve, you can't wait to come on Sunday and slap somebody in the back and tell them, I serve. Is there anybody in here that serves a good God? I want you to stand up right now, slap a couple people and say, maybe I ain't got it all together, but my God is good and he is greatly to be praised if that's you give god 